Hi, it's Liz from Lojas, Canada. It is mid-March and I have quite a bit to share with you. This is a knitting and sewing podcast looking for more eco-friendly options of what's happening. I am on the west coast of Canada, so I'm on Vancouver Island. I'm on a little town called Parksville. Not so little because it's growing like crazy here. Uh, our weather has kind of shifted. Actually, it's kind of still very cold at night, but we are slowly going toward warmer weather, hopefully, so we can wear our spring tees. So I finished the Half Moon Tee. So this one is by Dragon Horde Yarns or Dragon Horde Design. And I finally finished it. So this is a fingering 100% merino wool and it was only supposed to be a crop top but I did make it longer. I'll show you. So I knit it up to here and then I was like, I, uh, I wasn't able to try it on because my needles wasn't long enough uh, for me to go around. So I thought, oh you know what, I was holding it up and I was like, it'll fit. I think it's going to go around my natural waist. And I washed it, I put it on after I bind it off. Um, it was kind of, kind of springy, so I thought, okay, well maybe it'll like grow a bit. Uh, it did not, it actually shrunk up a little bit. And then I knit the bottom, I have not woven in my ends or I haven't blocked the bottom as well, so that's why it's rolling up. But once I do that, then it will be hopefully finished. I used two skeins of the blue color, almost two full skeins. Um, and then I have lots of this uh, dark color. So with this, I forgot there's a row here that's open and I was supposed to change colors. This is a three pattern or three colors. It was supposed to be and I just used two. So. Um, so that was supposed to be closed and also for my neck, I did not change needle sizes. So when I swatched for this, I got 24 stitches over 4 inches and the pattern was 20, no, I got 27 and the pattern was for 24. So I thought, okay, I'll do the smallest size and that will give me some ease and that will make it a little bit baggy t-shirt. I'm totally fine with that. So I didn't, um, and then when I calculated, because it tells you to drop a needle size for the neck, I calculated the stitches thinking like, okay, well, with my regular swatch that I just did, that would be the right size. So I didn't go down in the needle size for my neck or my arms. I just did kind of a, a knit and I probably should have done a loose bind off for it because it is a little bit snug. So I could always go back. I do want to block it out again. With the color work, I'm obviously a tight knitter, as you can see. Um, this was my like official first color work part, um, which took forever, just trying to get your hands in position and stuff. Uh, but once you get over that, then it's just um, stockinette, but it is fingering weight stockinette. So it did take me quite a while. And I did block it. My only thing, and maybe this is just the tension, is that I do have this little um, bump and it's in between the two color works and it's kind of just pushing it up so I don't know if it's just because my tension is so tight if I wash it and block it again maybe it'll start loosening it up again just the more I wear it um, now that it's coming toward more spring I'll be able to wear more t-shirts um, and it's like a perfect day for it because the sun is out and it's a little bit crispy right uh, so, um, yeah, I'm gonna block it out, see how it goes again, but I, it was supposed to be a crop top, and that's how the pattern's written, um, but I just don't wear a ton of crop tops, so. Um, I would say the neck is, is fine, it, it's 100% merino, so it's not itchy or anything for me. Um, I didn't do the sleeves, the sleeves also had, uh, some color work on it, but I just thought I would keep it really short, really cool, either that or if I had enough yarn. Uh, once I, um, once I finished the bottom, or thought I finished the bottom, I said, you know what, I have enough yarn probably to do sleeves, like full-length sleeves, make it more of a sweater sweater. 
uh, but when I blocked it and then tried it on again, it was only going up to my belly button, so <clears throat> I knew I had to use the rest of the wool to finish off for the body to make it in a, a length that I would wear. Otherwise, I probably would have done the sleeves, but I probably also would have wanted to go up a size just because I am very tight across. Uh, it's nothing uncomfortable, but uh, with this tightness, it doesn't give any uh, give down at the bottom. So if you think you're going to be able to pull it down, like what I originally thought, oh, I'll just be able to, it'll just spring down. Even when I was like just holding it against myself, trying to figure out the length, it was just so off because you really need to put it right against the top of your shoulders and then don't take into account for any of the weight that's at your, that your bottom needles are kind of pulling toward it down because there's just no no squishiness like there was no um bounce at the top just because of the color work which is great for like a sweater sweater because it'll definitely keep you warm and it's a nice it's a nice chest warm so that was so this is my finished object halfway almost done i think my next one i showed you last time i haven't done anything with it and i um now that it's coming up to spring i'll be definitely wearing it and this is the skinder deer uh cardigan the hoist cardigan i still haven't put buttons on i will be doing that because i'll be wearing that very soon and then just a regular nice scarf the hat dana um the scarf i actually this is 100 percent merino and it, um, I was super surprised because I wore it camping. We went camping last weekend and had a big fire and everything. And it was, it was raining the next day. So we just kind of packed up our things. We weren't too far from home, but I thought it was really going to smell like campfire and I was prepared to wash it and like, but you know what? It doesn't. So I was, I was pleasantly surprised that it does not smell like campfire. Another thing, I don't think I showed you this. So I showed you the hat from Skinder Deer, and it was a toque or a beanie or whatever you want to call it. So I wanted to do, um, and I love, I don't love hats. So my head gets very hot, the top, but I my ears stay very cold. <laughs> so I just tend to overheat at the top. So I was thinking, you know what, I really like this design um, for the color work. I want to make a... A little ear warmer it's probably not gonna look great right now but I've been wearing this we've been going up to the there's Mount Washington up here and um, you know probably doesn't look 100% good but uh, yeah I just knit it without the hat at the top because I really love love the color work so uh, I mean, yeah, it's been awesome. I've been wearing, been able to like wear my hair up, no problem. We've had some amazingly sunny days at the mountain. We go snowshoeing and it's just been like bright, beautiful, beautiful days and just like no need for an actual full toque, just, just a ear warmers, you know, just in case that little wind comes up. Um, I was wishing that I made it a little bit bigger because it's just the size of my ear, but that's the motif for the, um, pattern, but I can obviously make it a lot bigger. So with that, I actually want to start to knit them for my siblings. And um, I have to relook at this because I was really tired. But for some reason, so this is, um, it got twisted and I don't know how and I don't know if I can untwist it. It was fine when I did, you do the stockinette and then I did a provisional cast on. And once you get the provisional cast on, it is worth it, I find, to do it. So I did a crochet provisional cast on. You do stockinette, you do your color work. And then you're just going to Kitchener stitch those two together once you've reached the size that you want. So I don't know how. I was pretty tired. So it was all straight for the stockinette. So I don't know how this got twisted up for the color work. So now that I'm, I might try to figure this out tonight. Um, otherwise, I might just have to cut it and then sew it together. I don't even know how to do that for a hat. Um, earmuff type thing but I guess it can be done I can do it somehow um, but I don't know how that happened because it was totally fine for the stockinette it wasn't twisted so I should be able to untwist it uh, for this I've been just I haven't been doing 
anything. I've been working on my color work, but uh, as you can see, it's still not perfect. I have used the method of um, just uh, just carrying my yarn. Uh, when you very first start, you just carry it a couple stitches in, so then it's not such a drastic um, tension issue. And so that seems to be working out okay. Um, but for my jogs and stuff, I'm just I'm just not. I don't know. I'm not too worried about it. It's just a it's just a headband, and I'm getting better and I'm getting better with my tension, and I think it'll just all work out. So I still have a little bit of the motif left, and then um, I will Kitchener stitch those together. Um, I put the the yarn on another set of needles, and then you just Kitchener them together, and you have yourself a headband. So I think I think I really I don't know I think they're gonna be awesome gifts. It took me a little bit to learn the provisional cast on, but once you really learn it, I think it's um, I think it's essential because then you don't really have to. It's a bit more time because you're first crocheting, and then you're knitting the stitches in. Um, so it does take a little bit of prep work to set it up, but the hassle of it is very minimal at the end, and it's just a, it's a just a lovely way to do it rather than trying to think uh, that you're guessing where it all goes. The object that I have are these socks. So this is um, Briggs and Little, and this is the um, Tuffy, T yeah Tuffy. Um, brand or t the way Briggs and Little is the factory so uh, it's on the East Coast and it's a mill out there of, on the East Oak Coast of Canada and it is a very rustic yarn um, but I've worn it against my skin in the boots they especially this um, we had a couple days where we did have snow and I was out and I was wearing uh, another one of these that I made around Christmas time and my feet were actually quite hot even though it was snowing out uh, so definitely worth the investment I was wearing hiking boots um, but still it was definitely so I made these for myself uh, and then I started making a pair for my dad uh, where did I put it okay because um, it's his birthday coming up so I just started on the cuff um, but uh, I'm probably going to give these to him and then I'll just make my... We have the same size feet, so that works out really well. And uh, yeah, the only thing different I think I did than the um, than in the Christmas time, you can't really even see where the sock join is joined up because I just twisted the yarn over each other when I uh, when I added it. So... Just little, I think those little things that are happening, little tricks and stuff like that. Um, the reason why, I actually, you know what, I was gonna, maybe I won't give it to my dad. The reason why is because I gave him this exact same pattern. I guess it doesn't really matter. At Christmas time, I knit him the exact same socks. And then I uh, did a mistake on one of uh, the socks that I was giving. I just did all knit on a really big sock, so I just made them for myself. And so I didn't actually knit a pair of socks for myself last year. So this one I was going to make my dad um, like a little bit different at the top. I don't think he really probably cares. But I was just trying to think to help him distinguish between different socks. Um, just to make it white and then big chunk of red. So it's the same length for the cuff. But it's just the fact that he'll be able to be like, oh, these are my block socks rather than these when he's washing them or wearing them so but he might like these because then if um, he loses one he's got an extra one I don't know I'll let him decide he's not super picky on on anything so uh, I have two more I'll show you this this is the um, oh man you know what it's a it's a big number um, and I knit it two years ago and it's a vest just gonna pull that forward and I showed this last time I think too so I knitted this vest and it was my very first vest just trying to figure out the whole construction of everything I knit it flat and everything um, but it's very very short 
and I thought, you know what, I'm going to make it longer because I still had a full bowl of yarn left. And this yarn was from Salt Spring Island. They have a co-op over there from different sheep, so it's a very, very rustic wool. So I knew I wanted to do like a vest, some sort of outer garment, but I didn't think I would wear it because it's so short on me. So that I was like, oh, you know what? I'll make it longer. And the last time I did make it longer, but I didn't count as many stitches. So it had this weird flare out pattern and it wasn't very much longer. And I decided, you know what, I'm never, never going to wear this flare out kind of pattern. So I ripped it all back again. And then I just, um, I don't know, I googled uh, the eye cord. And so I'm just doing an eye cord because I can't figure out how to get the correct number of stitches. Because the yarn is just so, it's not a knit at the bottom, it's like this textured knit. And it's just so rustic that... I, you, I can't tell where the stitches are like I've picked up stitches before but and I thought I picked up maybe the kind of the right amount maybe extra but I think I picked up really double so uh, all that work and I'm just going back to binding it off so I'm doing an I-cord bind off um, so it doesn't actually look like it makes a difference of how many stitches I'm picked up um, and I really did try to pick up as many stitches as I thought there were, but it's just, it's kind of a mess with the really rustic walls. I don't know how people do it, picking out, uh, going back for really rustic walls. It's not, I don't, I don't recommend it. <laughs> so, um, because, uh, so I have many projects on the go just because I am doing like Zoom school or online school so I am able to sit there and knit so that's the only really reason why I'm getting through all these projects um, because I do need something I can just like the socks I figured out how to just sit there and knit them and I could actually um, keep track of the rows and everything and um, for this it was just you know I was able to do this part the color work um, outside school and then just stock in it um, and so I decided um, I was watching the Wooly Thistle podcast and they started to have a cowl knit along and I was like you know what I bought this yarn and I'll show you I made this bag and it's just a simple drawstring bag I just did a, um, I just made some bias tape for the handle out of the same fabric and I bought that same yarn that I'm using for the hat or using for the earmuffs and that's the um, Baby Lol uh, Lynette Superwash um, that's from Norwegian, Norwegian Wool. Um, so I bought this at a local yarn store up in Courtney. Um, it's about 45 minutes away from me so I really wanted to knit this Arnie and Carlos. Like I'm, I'm really into color work right now. And Arnie and Carlos have this pattern, it's called S9339, I think it's called. Uh, if it's not, I'll put it down below. But, uh, and it's just a beautiful scarf, and I was like, you know what, it'd be really great to get my hand on a scarf, and I can make mistakes, it's not such a big deal. Like, you know, you can always see my tension is really tight in this one, and that's a lot of investment of my time. So... I had all the yarn and then the woolly thistle was like, we're doing this this cowl and I was like, perfect. This is a great opportunity. I wasn't able to join in on their um, cast out on party because it was all full and I was at school as well. But um, I've been able to post pictures in their Facebook group and kind of um, keep it updated. So I'll show you what the, um, the backside looks like kind of crazy so it, it's I'm knitting it in the round in the tube and one side is obviously um, so this is the the back side then I'll flip it around so the my only issue and I'm, ha I'm really enjoying this I am having to sit down and actually Follow the pattern. It's not one you can memorize because, as you see, every section is a different motif. But look at it. So, and every motif is different. If you look at, like, if you look at this one, you're like, okay, I'm knitting, knitting, knitting. Then halfway, 
you go around to the other side and it's the reverse. So you can see I'm definitely looser here and then I go a bit tighter then depending on the motif I go really tight like this one. But as you can see here this is a good example. This one here you got the prominent um, brown and then the blue and then on this side you have the prominent blue and the brown. So it's just a it's just an opposite repeat. So that isn't the big deal. The big deal is that the pattern is so tiny you can't even write the um, I can't even write like knit five pearl two or no, it's not pearl knit five uh, change color you know two I can't even do that so I would just usually do like five comma two and I know to switch colors I can't even do that because it's so so tiny so you can blow it up of course and I really recommend doing that or I have looked at, I haven't looked at it fully, but there are programs and software you can use on your phone. You download the pattern in and it goes line by line. I haven't tried that right now. I am just using a book on top. So I put the, my pattern down, I put a book on top and then just the line, I just keep moving it the further I go up because your eyes just bounce. It's too hard. I can't, I can't just write it. It's way too tiny. So I, this was, I think up to here was page one and then there's a second page. It's not as long. So I'm probably going to have to do this again and um, so do it the whole thing twice to make it long enough for a scarf unless I wanted it more like a cowl which I could but I think uh, I think I'll do the original and I have enough yarn because I put in all that time and money and effort into the yarn might as well use it up but it's just it's so beautiful it is really enjoyable and it does go by fast it's just that the fact like this took me forever until I figured out how I can effectively read the pattern um, by just like I don't know, having like a ruler, like something really straight so you can go um, line by line. But I, I would probably recommend looking at some sort of software or blowing it up. But you're going to have to blow up not just the first part because it's not like just to repeat the first part because, as I said, the halfway point is the opposite. So you really mean, need to blow up both sections of it. So that's just a lot of pages, but it's doable. So... But I am really enjoying this. I'm really enjoying the colors. Um, just colors. I'm like, oh, like this color, this red and this gray would be amazing together, like in a sweater. Uh, this color is actually this, I think. And this one is actually supposed to be yellow instead of, mm, instead of the blue. So they didn't have yellow at the store. I don't know if the Norwegian place makes yellow, but that would be my only other recommendation is to get the yellow if you can, because it does look really pretty in the photograph. It's just that they didn't have it, but, um, but just like color combinations of things like, you know, even this color and the gray, I think I just really love the gray. I was thinking because I make been making want to make more of these whatever your leftover yarn the earmuffs um, I can just use that and maybe make some different earmuff colors because as long as you got white you can even do it with the gray as a, like a contrast color and I you know it could just take a, a pattern out of here being like oh I really like this section I'll just make that like is that wide enough and I already have you know your color work swatch basically um, just to see if it's it's fits wide enough for your ears. Some people really like wide earmuffs. Some people uh, like that one for me is more like a headband and I like that a little bit more so it's not pushing my hair fully back if I wanted to wear it half up or half down. Um, but yeah, just personal preference. So my, I was talking to my other sister and she just said, yeah, she just wants a really thin one as well. Doesn't have to be super big. So... Is that all my knitting? Okay, that is all everything that I, I've knit. I did, I can't find it right now, but I was knitting a little um, 
finger puppet. <laughs> so I'm doing an ECE course, Early Childhood Development course, and um, we're getting into the more creative stuff. So for sewing, I'll show you the more creative stuff, um, but I'm wanting to do finger puppets, so I did a little um, bunny, but the, my gauge was completely off, so I think um, it was a free pattern, so I'm just going to have to kind of go down on my stitches and then make it a bit longer. And probably look at some other patterns as well because it is pretty simple pattern, but it's not, you know, you can make it really, really cute as well, I think, too. So my, um, I do have some books, some books to show you, and I do have, um, some yarn to show you. So there was a yarn store in Nanaimo, so that's like half an hour away from my, where I live and I was just going to the mall for something else. Um, this one mall is like very very dead like it's just not a lot of people go to this mall um, and anyhow I was in there for something else and then they had a sale on but it was like a sale of between like 20% to 60% which I don't know if I've ever seen that in a like 60% off yarn. I've only really seen that like online but never really in a store um, unless they're going out of business type thing. So this one was just getting rid of stock. Um, they were also saying that some of their shipment that they came in um, was just a one-time shipment but they received it like they received that notice after they got the stock. So it was something that they couldn't continuously um, bring in because uh, of different mills uh, not being at full capacity or whatever. So I'll show you what I got. So for this yarn, I forgot to mention, um, it's by the Small Bird Workshop. So she supplies local yarn. She does her own dyeing. She's in Nanaimo. And so I do love to support small businesses, but I do, you know, shop at yarn shops as well because it's affordability as well, right? So um, I can't, I would love to have a full wardrobe of hand dyed Canadian yarn, um, but also it's, you know, you, we have to also look at the price gauge as well of what you can afford. So I think it is a counter, it is a balance and I don't need to have a whole wardrobe full of knitted garments. I would love that, but also realistically, like, um, I also have to look at the price point. So I do want to show you some other yarns I got as a price point. But I also forgot to tell you, let's do this first, because I already showed you this a couple weeks ago. No, probably um, Christmas time. I got this yarn from the Small Bird Workshop, and I wanted to support um, local yarns at Christmas time, of course. So I bought myself this um, kit, not a kit, um, this yarn to make this shirt. And then I also bought um, some yarn, these three colors. Um, and it's fingering as well and it's a floor four ply because I wanted to do um, Andrea Maui's Maui's oh my gosh I can't say your name um, it's called vintage I think it's 83 yeah and um, I thought that was gonna be a very easy pattern and I just looked at it because I just finished this yesterday and this was gonna be my next cast on and it's brioche, <laughs> which I've never done before. Um, so that will be interesting. So it's brioche at the top and then a textured texturedness at the bottom. This one is fingering BFL and Gotland wool. Um, so I didn't make it so it can be long enough because I don't I don't really wear a ton of crop stuff and I don't have like high waisted jeans. So that is going to be my next project. And I don't know if I showed you, but I, yeah, made this canvas bag as well. And then I just used some cord for the drawstring. So that is going to be my next cast on. I don't know about you, but Fabricland, where you are, um, they seem to have a sale on a whole bunch of the knitting stuff. But I didn't want to get, I know I wanted to make a, um, a sweater again. Uh, not something like... Not something I, I don't think it's big or as heavy as the um, my first sweater, um, which was an Aran weight, but I wanted something a bit more just in that color. Uh, so this is a spindle yarns and it's called Seafarer and it's 100% wool. A lot of the stuff at Fabricland was um, 
a, a lot of polyester and that's just something I personally don't choose if I'm going to knit I'm going to knit with real wool otherwise I'll just buy the garment if it's just polyester right uh, it says a medium weight um, and it's called rockin slippers so it's definitely not like a super rustic wool or super fine like super wash wool it's not that so these were um, $6.29 so for me, I got six, seven balls. I think I cleared them out of this stuff um, just because I am going to do a sweater. And uh, I can't keep spending, I mean, I could, but seven times, you know, six bucks, that's an affordable sweater. So um, I do, you know, you, got, you really have to pick your battles. All right, and I also uh, got two of the blue color because I thought it'd be nice to have some color work at the bottom. All right, so um, I went to, yeah, I was saying that I was going to the mall and then I went to the store, um, the yarn shop. It's a relatively new yarn shop. I think they just opened up last September. Um, and they had three of these um, and they are, what are they? Birch de France. Um, I'm obviously not saying that right. So these were made in France and it's 55% um, cotton, 36% linen, and then 9% viscose. So uh, the reason why I got these was because spring's coming up and I knew I'm going to be knitting some really nice tops and oh my goodness like it's really really thin so um, I knew I wanted something to be drapey and linen and cotton I think we're gonna be kind of drapey-ish so uh, it's 427 yards and I think these ones were like the 60% off so um, you know I was thinking ahead of myself so keeping on the cotton theme um, these are uh, fibra natural Radiant cotton, so 100% Egyptian cotton, uh, 203 yards, 100 grams. So I do want to knit stuff in the summertime. In the summertime, I take a break mainly. I do more reading, um, but I do wanted to make a nice drapey top. So I got some blacks and then I got this hot pink so then I can do some color work within it. Um, I don't really know why I got black for summertime, but that's okay. <laughs> I think once I mix it with the pink and there'll be some pops in there, but um, yeah, I think also just a really nice classic tee will be good for that. So the other thing that they had was Noro was on sale and uh, so Noro is made in Japan and uh, I got green, not that I wear a ton of green, especially this green, I wear more of a forest green. But I just saw the Star Wars book and they had the baby Yoda and this would be the perfect color for Yoda. So I was like, okay, one, one ball. I think they, she was like, do you want to get the second ball? There was only two balls left. And I was like, I don't think I need two balls. So I just got the one. Um, so yeah, it's silk, mohair and some wool. But I thought that would be the perfect color for baby Yoda. The only other thing I saw in that book that I really would want to knit down down the road, I don't have a burning desire, is the R2-D2 pillow. If you haven't seen it, it's pretty neat, um, but that's, it's not a burning desire because I can't, I can't wear it. So, I was thinking, okay, you know what, I really want to make that um, woodlark shark shawl, oh my gosh, woodlark shawl <laughs> from Fiber Tales. And um, the yarn I got is a very rustic yarn, but it's, I think it's more, I think it's more heavier than I would want it. Uh, I've been playing with it in my head of how, if I would still wear it and I don't know, I'd probably still knit it, but I wanted to get... Uh, tweed. So they had some tweed superwash, which is wool, um, a little bit of viscose, and a little bit of acry acrylic, like 3% acrylic. Um, so it got this color, and I got this color. 
So I think I'm going to do the Word Lark shawl in these two colors first. See how I feel about the really rustic wool afterwards and see how big it is. Because the really rustic wool, I don't know if I'm be able to get it. It's from a local farm in um, Nanaimo or Cedar area, and uh, like I, I don't even, I don't can't remember the contents of it because they had it on their website. They only put it on their website when they have the product. Um, so I would have to email them to see if I could get any more. So if I wanted to do a sweater with it, um, because. I'll show you the book that I got. So in uh, on Vancouver Island there is a uh, First Nations publishing store, publisher, yeah. Uh, there used to be a store um, and they used to start it out of their basement as a publishing company, um, moved into a store and then with everything that happened they decided to shut down and then just kind of have more of a warehouse and do all the, do a bunch of publishing. So um, they're a First Nation owned company. Um, so anyhow it's called Strong Nations and so you can go on their website and buy books and you can choose your region um, for your for, for First Nation. Like if I wanted I'm on the co west coast of Canada so Coast Salish um, in Canada so you can actually select Coast Salish in Canada and see the different authors um, in that that region of for books. So I ended up, I was looking for a kid's book, which um, I got. I guess I could show you that too. Anyway, I was searching for kid's stories for my EC program um, because I think it's very important for representation, uh, in, you know, in the classroom and that I also know some stories as well because I live here. So why, why aren't I learning about this, right? Anyhow, I was looking and I found um, this one called Raven and Eagle and I was like, oh, because uh, I did go to uh, VIU, Vancouver Island University, and in their First Nations program they have an elder in residence. So there's actually an elder in the classroom and uh, who actually is paid, you know, through the university um, to be there and that's... Uh, his name was Uncle Ray, Ray Peter. So I was like, oh my goodness, this is, this is Ray. And uh, Ray passed away a couple of years ago and uh, he would always come in and, uh, and sing and tell stories. And he was definitely a storyteller. And I actually recorded a video um, or an audio recording of him telling the story. Um, many years ago uh, so it was really interesting to see that it's actually a little it's a really thin book um, it's more like a calendar I would say um, but uh, yeah there wasn't too many I think there was only like three uh, preschool books um, for the Coast Salish in British Columbia and this was one of them and so it's like oh my goodness I have to I have to get this and so it'll be a story that I'll, I'll slowly memorize so I can tell you know and I was even thinking I could do felt you know cut out felt pieces um, to tell the story so uh, while I was there this book popped up and usually I do not buy new knitting books um, but this one is from uh, Sylvia Olson and she is um, a first name or she married a First Nations man a Coast Salish man uh, moved on to the reserve and uh, because First Nations um, a lot of them don't write their patterns and it's all memory and she does talk about it in the book um, and she if you haven't seen it I'll try to find it but she actually tells um, there is a film it's called the stories of the Coast Salish knitters um, and uh, she also wrote a thesis working with wool so she worked uh, she I'll show you a picture of her she uh, hopefully you can see that I don't know so that's her and uh, so she it's got seven patterns in here but it's more about stories um, it's not like a for formula recipe for the um, 
for like a couch and sweater or something. If you don't know what couch and sweaters are, um, a lot of them, a lot of, I know a lot of people who don't know uh, about couch and sweaters, it's actually a tribe. So it's actually a First Nations tribe. So on Vancouver Island, there's couch in, uh, like as a city, um, and it's uh, got the First Nations uh, tribe and uh, they would knit sweaters and so it's a very rustic wool usually just two tones so uh, natural color like a dark color and a light color and it just it's a very very itchy wool and you wear it as an outer garment or a hat and then they have their own motifs in them uh, if you see them uh, you know, wearing their own couch and sweater. A lot of times they'll have their own family crest in them. And you've probably seen other companies um, take it and call them couch and sweaters when they're not. So like HBC, when um, the Olympics happened in Vancouver in 2010, the couch and people take took HBC, like the Bay, to court because they were selling these Cowichan sweaters that were made not in Cowichan, not even close to Cowichan, they were made overseas and calling them that. So there's a whole story behind that. She does talk about like the Cowichan people also having um, their own for their own pure dogs and they would um, keep them on an island and uh, those dogs no longer exist um, which so they'd be spinning with dog hair in their original sweaters and how they used it to make money. She also owned a trading post um, where she would actually sell the Cowichan sweaters because that's how people at that time would um, make money on the reserves and just yeah it's a really nice back story um she does have i said again seven patterns in here and so i've already been looking at them before um but um it's her own patterns there's it's not like a family crest it's going to be in here or anything uh so she does loosely talk about the couch and sweaters but more that people just learn from watching um that's how they were taught and uh the way you were the way you knit was depending on who you who you watched and there was a you know a lady in here that um you know she's blind and she still knits because she's able to and she's been doing it all her life and um it hasn't deterred her or she hasn't made many mistakes because it's all by working memory or body memory so that was my one really excited purchase and I, I think, I think it is important to, to buy those ones that um, are new, that support the, the artist and the author and um, the work that they've put in through all those years. So the other two books I got from the thrift store, um, one is called Spears Weaving Loom Size 4 Pattern Book, uh, just because maybe one day I'll get into looming but it seemed really really simple and I just wanted to look at some old school looming projects and like vests and stuff um my sister has a loom I don't know if, I don't know if she'll ever get to use it but and then the other one is the ultimate source book of knitting and crochet stitches. So I'm going to go through all my think my all the my other knitting books and really see if I really want them because I don't seem to continuously use them. Um, and I think other people might have a better use out of them. But I think with these books, because there's just so many stitches in here, um, what my hope is that's that I learn like a really good. Um, pattern that I really like that looks flattering on me that fits me well find yarns that I really like and then I can just change things out with different stitch patterns different motifs um, I don't need to always you know knit the next best thing type thing or the most fashionable thing I just w really want some classic knitwears that I can continue maybe just doing a little bit of modifications or color work or different stitch patterns like learning some cabling just to change it up so that's kind of my mindset on that that's why I'm looking for more stitch books and I think that's probably all I really really need you know famous last words but that is my goal. <laughs> All right, so that is it because that was a lot, a lot of knitting. Um, so I don't have too much to show you on the sewing end, but I do want to show you some projects that I've been working on.
Before we get into sewing, I just want to show you, I forgot about this. Um, I am going to, I picked some lichen, so it's been very, very windy. Um, we're still in March, so things are just falling, branches are falling, and lichen fell off and, um, on, off of a, on a path, and I was able to pick quite a bit up. So, it was in a parking lot, so it wasn't like anything. I'm not picking it off trees. So, um, I bought some household ammonia and put it in, and this is only one day. So, if you've seen lichen, beautiful, green, 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 and then now it's just this, um, and ammonia is a clear color. Like, this was all clear yesterday. So, that's just one day. Um, so I think I have, like, three more months for this to really sit, and then I'll try to use it. I'll use it in a dye bath. I'll probably use some more Briggs & Little, get some nice rustic wool, or maybe, and you know, fairs aren't happening, so, um, it's as far as I'll go. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see what kind of yarn I use on this and what color it gives me, um, but just letting it sit for the longest time, right? It's the hardest part. So let's get into the sewing part. I did find at the thrift store this fabric guide as well. I do realize I need to learn more about fabric um, just because there's just so much to learn about different types and different what people call it and it doesn't have the little swatches in it but it does have um, the uses and the types of wool um, so it has more that style of it. Uh, what it's used for, what the properties are, what it's made out of, and I think for my brain just to have a book like that very being very simple. I think I should probably also create my own fabric book and that will really help me uh, understand how the different materials work in different ways just because there's so much to learn. Even when I was at the fabric store the other day and I was looking for um, making handkerchiefs and you know they were saying cotton lawn and all that stuff um and then there was this other one i found and i was like oh it's way softer than cotton lawn and they were like yeah i don't really know what this fabric is and um so i got it and it works it works completely fine but it was just um okay so there's something better maybe or softer than cotton lawn or maybe it doesn't hold up i don't know it's just gonna time will tell right so i think just providing those ideas of uh what what those things are gonna be used for all right so my one my first project isn't i mean it is sewing but it's this guy. <laughs> this is a working progress. So this is a puppet, obviously. I basically made two pillows, put them together, put some arms on. Um, this is a sock and this is felt. So um, I'm gonna do a video on this puppet um, and this is 100% wool, wool felt, which is very different than the polyester felt. Um, I mean, it's not very different, but it does look different and it feels different and I think it behaves a bit different too because it's, it's more stiff. Um, but I'm going to put some more material here so this is all closed up. This is just a regular old sock there and um, it's supposed to be a turtle. It kind of looks like a snake now that I'm looking at it more. So um, I'm still not fully done with this yet, uh, but it's a social... Oh, that's supposed to be at the front. <laughs> so this guy does have a tail and it's supposed to be at the back, not the front. <laughs> um, so I did embroidery on here and on the, on the shell as well. Obviously you can do whatever, that's just machine embroidery. Uh, I did some hand stitching and yeah, we'll just keep the back open and then I'll put some more fabric here just so it connects to this. And uh, I was doing the story Tucker the Turtle, so it's a socially emotional, um, related story what he does when he's angry so it's on YouTube uh, we just did a little puppet show I guess um, for people and uh, in our class and just to get some good stories and learning puppetry and creating your own um, puppet ideas so that's what I'm up to. Um, and having puppet conversations are, is quite hilarious of what people remember about their own puppets when they were a kid of, did they have a puppet? Did a puppet come to their school? Um, you know, there was one called like, it was like a chicken and um, I think it was like my body, something. It was something about a, your, your own body and nobody touches it type thing. Um, <laughs> so I don't know what, 
what puppets did you have that maybe were effective, maybe not so effective. Um, it seems, you know, cats really love puppets and having that external play uh, outside of, of um, outside of themselves so they're able to work through situations or um, think about it in not such a concrete way of me and you but you know oh yeah I've, I've had that too you know um, as an outsource uh, but yeah you don't really see puppets too much or maybe you do when I just um, I, I, I don't go to those places where I have lots of puppets all right um the other one which i'll do a video on as well i'm just kind of um putting it together is felt board so i'll be talking about this later just to see if I, um it really does work i use cotton flannel for this or flannelette um just because it's a lot cheaper and then these pieces are the 100% wool 100% wool felt is expensive expensive like it's four bucks for one of those sheets so super pricey but I wanted to do a little investment just to make sure that uh, just to see the difference and um, see if I could felt on it uh, as you can see uh, here it is with the B I tried to use a black felt um, like felt on it with on top of it and tried to needle felt it so it didn't work too too well on that it worked okay for these pieces where needle felt it together so that wasn't too bad the needle felt, I think they usually don't do that. They usually use the wool felt more for like 3D projects, like if you're making a horse and stuff, just because you don't need to um, do any stitching on the ends or anything so it doesn't come apart. The story is called um, The Angry Bee. Oh, the turtle one is not the Latter-day Saints ones. It is the... Um, Oh, it's by another lady, but it's called Tucker the Turtle. This one is by the Latter-day Kids. Um, so these, this one is about anger issues um, and um, what happens when the bee turns angry. Uh, so it's a really cute, cute story. Um, it's a little bit, a lot to memorize, but, uh, and then I just have it on, uh, this, I just put it on a tray, um, for when I did the presentation so it can be removed detachable and I just made ties so it can be tied up anywhere and then um, it can be rolled up when it's not in use so I do I'm going to make a flannel with a cotton flannelette a little pouch or something to make sure that these are all housed in really nice um, because I'll probably be doing I think we're gonna be doing a lot more felt stores in the next couple uh, couple months as well as she said so I think having a place for that so yeah, just making it fun and entertaining, but oh my goodness, it's, um, yeah, not, I'm not sewing, I'm not sewing any clothes right now, I'm, I'm sewing, um, puppetry stuff, uh, which was a little bit tricky also to, just to figure out, because, like, there's no, you know, you get, like, puppetry to the extreme, where it's, like, you know, it could be on TV, and then there's, just the sock puppets which are great too so I think I'm gonna do a little bit more sock puppet ones um, and maybe add some flannelette to it or flannel um, and I'm gonna experiment with the flannelette just to see like do can I just you know maybe make a big hand puppet like say a bear or something and then be able to serge the insides with it and then maybe add some some wool felt to the outsides just so that it um, it all comes together. So I'm going to do a little bit experimenting because definitely the cotton flannel is 100% way more cheaper, um, but then you don't get as many colors. So we will see how that goes, but so far that's, that's my exciting life of making puppetry, knitting, and uh, yeah, the weather's changing, so hopefully we'll get into some more gardening, um, outdoor adventures like canoeing and kayaking and kind of see how this year goes with uh, all the outdoor activities. I think it's going to be a very busy year again for all these outdoor activities. So we'll see um, see different plays and see how different things go. Um, I would like to make a bit more puppets uh, and also finger puppets. I think those would be um, great for kids as well because I was thinking, you know, even with the turtle, it would be great to afterwards giving out finger puppets to kids to play with to kind of do some you know their own little story time play um and kind of kind of go from there so those are those are easy to do but it's just you know time consuming so 
I think that's it for me. Um, we're going to be working on the sock again. Continue working on the scarf. The scarf I'm really trying, was trying to do one hour a day um, in the morning time, but um, I kind of fell off the bandwagon this week um, just because I am on spring break right now. But I'm trying to cram everything into my spring break. Um, and then I go back to school next week um, online. So just trying to do a whole bunch of other different things that I normally, especially with creativity, uh, especially the puppet, the turtle puppet, I was able to do it, um, you know, the shell and everything. And then when I got to the head and like all that stuff, I just burned out of steam. Like um, for when I presented, I just used an old sock and I had an elastic band wrapped around its mouth. So it, it actually would, um, would separate and stuff. So I don't, I find I don't do well under creative pressure, right? So, and when I have to think of and try to memorize other things as well. So if it was just creative pressure, no problem, but I think creative pressure mixed in with other stuff, I don't do so well. And this week I will be casting on that um, brioche uh, and Andrea's um, vintage, I think it's called vintage 83. Um, and see how that goes and I think I'm just using the two colors instead of three and uh, yeah I'm looking forward to it I think it'll be a nice spring tea I'm looking forward to spring um, and that everything has to offer and we're heading into a new year so I hope you guys are all doing well and I will talk to you guys later bye